Welcome to Octopus Deploy 2022.2. This release includes early access to our new ServiceNow integration. I'll hand over to Trent from our R&D team to walk you through it. Hi, I'm Trent Mohey, a developer at Octopus Deploy, and I'm here to talk about the ServiceNow integration we've delivered as part of the 2022.2 release of Octopus. This integration offers an extra layer of protection during the deployment process by ensuring that engineers not only have permission to perform deployments in general via Octopus's inbuilt permissioning system, but that a ServiceNow approval also exists for this specific deployment. This approval is represented as a ServiceNow change request, specifically one which is in the implement phase. This presentation will touch on a few different points, but will try and stick to a flow that will be similar to your usage. At a high level, this really comes down to how we configure Octopus and ServiceNow to enable the integration, how the integration presents at deployment time, and how you can tweak the behavior of this integration to best suit your requirements. In order to enable this approval checking on your deployments, you must first configure both ServiceNow and Octopus. In ServiceNow, you'll need to do two things. The first of which is to create a service account, which the Octopus will use when reaching out to ServiceNow. And we can see that I've already created a user and provided it with minimal permissioning. The second thing we need to do in ServiceNow is to create an OAuth endpoint. And so we'll go to the application registry under the system OAuth and create a new entry. We'll then say create an OAuth API endpoint for external clients. We'll give it a name that has meaning, so Octopus Deploy. And otherwise, we'll allow it to automatically populate the rest of these fields and we'll hit submit. Now we do need to go back into that because we'll need to cut and paste some of these parameters across into Octopus, which we'll do in just a minute. Jumping across to Octopus, the first thing that needs to happen is to set up a license which enables the, the ServiceNow integration. So you can see here that I already have a feature which says ServiceNow integration. You can get your license by contacting Octopus support. With that set, we now need to configure the connection between Octopus and ServiceNow. So if we come down to the settings underneath configuration, you can see we have a new item called ServiceNow integration. This will only be visible if your license is already installed. Under this setting, we're able to enable ServiceNow, which means that deployments will be checked to see if they're appropriate for approvals, and we'll be able to add some connections. So if I click add connection, I'm now given all the configuration parameters that I need to connect to ServiceNow. So the first item is a human readable name. So I'll call that my primary connection. The ServiceNow base URL is the protocol and the route of your instance. So we don't need anything after the .com. The OAuth client ID was recently created when we create our OAuth endpoint, which I'll cut and paste that in. And we'll also need the client secret, which is currently hidden, but we'll make visible. And we'll cut and paste that. And we'll put that into our client secret. Now our username that I've previously created was octopus.rest. And the password is secret. And I can now test that to see if it's been successful. Terrific. So we can see that I've got a connection successful message, which means that all of my parameters have successfully found our instance of service now. Make sure you press the OK button to keep the connection. Then let's persist them to the database with a save. Terrific. So that's us having enabled service now connection, service now integration, and also created a connection. The next piece of the puzzle to fill is to go to our projects and to identify which one of our projects will be requiring approval. So we've got two projects here, and I'm going to say that my project one is sufficiently important to warrant being protected. So I'll go into project, I'll come down to settings, and you can see that we've got a new section of settings in the bottom here called ServiceNow integration. At the moment, it says change control is no. So let's enable that. Let's also choose the ServiceNow connection that we'll be using. So that primary connection which we previously set up. 
And finally, the change template name. We're going to leave that blank, but we'll come back to it and talk later. Okay, terrific. So set that up. Let's save it. The second thing we need to do is go across to our, our infrastructure and look at our environments. And in this instance, I'm going to make my production environment also change controlled. So we're going to come down to the edit. And again, we've got a single section here at the bottom implying ServiceNow integration, and I'll change that to change controls and save. So what is it that I've done? When we come and look at the dashboard for my projects, project one is change control, and so is the production environment, meaning that deployments which fit into this cell will always ask ServiceNow for an approval. Nothing in test will ask, and nothing in project two will ask. It's only where the intersection of the project in the environment change control flags meet. So with that set up, let's attempt to do a deployment. First of all, let's go into project one and we'll create a new release. Create a release, number two, save, terrific. Now I'll deploy that to test and we'll do that right now. So terrific, you can see that deployment has started and is executed. Now, if I attempt to push this to production, let's see what happens. Terrific, so we're gonna send release two to production, deploy. So the task has now started and it says, we don't have a CR yet, we are unable to execute. But if we give that just a second, you can now see that a change request does exist and we're waiting for it to be approved. This is now a link to take us across to ServiceNow and literally the CR that we're waiting on. So here's the CR. As you can see, it's got a short description explaining that Octopus is trying to deploy project one version two to production. You can see it's a normal change and also that we're in the new state. Terrific. How about we push this CR through to implement so that we can see what happens next. Okay, so with that done, let's assign an assignment group. I'm going to use a group that exists on my example here called software. And let's request approval. Before I can move this into implement, I need to get approval from all of the people in that group. So let's approve that CR and say, yes, this work is appropriate to be executed. And let's update that. Terrific, so it's now been authorized. We're waiting for approvals. Let's reapply some of those approvals. Now gone to scheduled. Terrific. So if we come back to our task, we'll refresh that page and have a quick check to see what's happening. Still hasn't started. We're still waiting for approval. So although we've approved the CR, we haven't moved it into the implement phase. So let's do that now and update it. Terrific. So we can now see that change request has been approved. And we're just waiting to execute. And thus it started executing and the deployment is completed. Now, potentially that deployment may need to be re-executed. And ideally we'd like to re-execute it using the same approvals such that we don't need to go back through the change management loop. And this is entirely possible as Octopus tracks which CRs have been previously used for a given release and environment. And if said CR is still open, it will get reused. However, if the CR is closed, then it cannot be reused and Octopus would automatically create a new CR. So with that in mind, and knowing that our CR is still open in ServiceNow, let's redeploy version two to production. So coming back to the dashboard, version two, let's redeploy. And we're gonna do that right now. So although it said that it's waiting for a CR, it then went and found that one already existed and, predict and proceeds straight through. So there may be times that you do not wish to use a full-blown normal change process, and you may be okay to use a standard change process. As we said, you are able to specify a standard change template as part of your project. If we go across to ServiceNow, we can see 
that there are a variety of standard changes available. So let's piggyback on one of them. We're going to pretend to be a rebooting of a Windows server. Let's save that. If we can, let's make a new release. Create a release, dot three, push out to deployment, out to testing, sorry. Which again, shouldn't require a change request, but moving to production should. So we'll deploy that. Again, we'll wait for the change request to be created. Let's go and have a look. So this time you can see that we've actually got a standard change request, meaning we don't need to seek approvals. So in this case, I'm gonna suggest that it's got low risk. The assignment group, we'll stick with those soft with software. And let's see if we can go through to schedule, update. If we refresh this, change request is still open or still not implement. Let's move him through to implement and update. And coming back so to Octopus, you can see that the change request has been approved and that deployment will start in just a moment. Fantastic. So that has demonstrated how Octopus can create normal changes, how Octopus can create standard changes, and how Octopus will automatically use a previous CR if it's still in the open state. So if we just come and have a look at all open changes at the moment, and we can see our most recent one, which is our standard change in implement, that was used for dot three to go to production. If we close that and update, and that's number 672, if I attempt to redeploy, of that same version back to production, and give that just a moment, you can see that we've now created 673. And that's because the previously used CR is now closed and it cannot be reused. And so a new one is required and it needs to go back through the loop of change management. Now, one more piece that's worth discussing is a concept that we refer to manual selection, which is that there may be times that you have previously created the CR under which a certain body of work should be conducted. So let's come across to ServiceNow and we'll manually create a CR, which we will be using for future deployments. So let's create a new change request. It can be a normal change request. Um, do the deployment, submit. Terrific, so we've just created our own new change request down here called do the deployment, which is 674. Now, in order for Octopus to know which change request you're going to use, it's important that we create a prompted variable for the deployment. If we go into variables and we say, we want to create a new variable, open the editor. You must use a very specific naming convention, which is octopus.servicenow.changerequest.number. It will be textual and we want to prompt for value. It is not required. With that created and saved, we'll create ourselves a new release to factor in that variable. We'll create dot four and we'll deploy to test. Deploy. Now, when we deploy to production, you'll see that in our deployment parameters, we now have that prompted variable. Let's go and get the number of that change request. And we'll put it in here. So this is forcing Octopus to use that change request rather than automatically create one. And let's deploy. So again, our task is now ready to go. We're waiting for the CR. And now we've found it. And terrific, you can see that we found the number that we inserted, number 674. So if we go to that, 
And this is our do the deployment. If we were to follow that through, you could see that that deployment would follow that CR and would drive to completion. And that's how you would explicitly state which CR you wish to use for a deployment, as opposed to having Octopus automatically creating one for you. Terrific. Thanks very much for your time. And that brings the story of Octopus Deploy and ServiceNow integration to a close. Visit octopus.com to learn more. Happy deployments.